Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Del Duca, naturopathic physician on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Today, I have my patient Jaden here. We're going to be doing a rotator cuff exam on Jaden, and we're going to be assessing some of the structures in and around the shoulder as well. So we'll start with position one with the hand neutral, and we'll take a look at the biceps tendon in short access to start. So here today, I'll be using the L7 wireless Clarius scanner. So first we find and locate the biceps tendon in short access. Here we can take a look and see the biceps underneath the sheath. There can be a fusion in this location when we're looking at the biceps tendon. At times, this effusion can come from the glenohumeral joint and cause a halo effect that is hypoechoic around this structure. It does not necessarily mean there is pathology of the biceps tendon or tendinosis. Going to long axis in this plane, we can see the fibers of the biceps tendon. These are long striated linear fibers and we're looking for any coracal pathology along the anterior aspect of the humeral head and any disruption in the biceps tendon. I see no pathology here. Next, we'll move on to the subscapularis, which is just medial to the biceps tendon. Sliding our probe, medial, we appreciate the coracoid on the medial aspect of the screen. Here, I'll often tell my patients to externally rotate. I'll give them a hand in this case. And we can appreciate the subscapularis tendon moving through its interval adjacent to the coracoid process. This demonstrates the tendon footprint on this side. And as we move out and externally rotate, the apneurotic tissue of the subscapularis, which sometimes can be a pain generator if there's disruption or thickness of this structure. In order to examine the subscapularis, we have the patient slightly externally rotate and we look at the tendon footprint. Here I do see some minor coracal irregularities. The patient is without pain on the anterior aspect of the shoulder, so I'm not overly concerned about this area. So now we're going to go ahead and ask Jaden to just go to position two and we're going to look at the supraspinatus here. So when we're appreciating the tendons of the rotator cuff, we're thinking about four major things. Tendon thickness, calcification, neovascularization, and fibular disruption. In Jaden's case, I see no problems with the supraspinatus as the tapering of the tendon on the lateral aspect of the humerus conforms quite nicely.